uh, let me get on this. So it says the coefficient of static friction between the rubber eraser of the pencil and the tabletop is some given value. It said, and then if the force F is applied along the axis of the pencil, okay. What is the minimum angle, minimum, why minimum, at which the pencil can stand without slipping? Oh. All right, um, it says ignore the weight of the pencil. I'm guessing there's a, so I hope uh, as you are reading it, um, that when it says minimum angle, I guess uh, on the one hand, uh, it might make some intuitive sense in that if the pencil is, um, oops, uh, if the pencil is like lying completely flat, then as you push it, then it would slide, okay, so, Theta equals zero doesn't work. And if it's at 90 degrees, then as you push it down, of course it wouldn't slide. So I hope it makes some intuitive sense that there's a, a angle at which it kind of transitions from not sliding to sliding. And I think the um, thing that might, um, I hope will cause wonderment is that the question doesn't tell you how much force uh, you are applying. So um, what I hope you will have enough problem solving intuition for to kind of look for, figure out and look for is that somehow at some point in this problem solving, you're going to be able to get independent of the applied force magnitude that if uh, the pencil is uh, below this angle, then it's gonna slide no matter how much force you apply. So we'll see. So this is uh, uh, like all static equilibrium question, it's a Newton's uh, second law uh, strategy question. So you start by drawing free body diagram. So let me start by drawing free body diagram. Um, let me draw it here. So on this uh, free body diagram, um, so I think with this one, technically I don't need to uh, represent the extended body, but let me, just to, to be thorough. So I'm gonna draw the pencil. This is my representation of where the forces will be. So I have an applied force, which is acting at this point, pointed along the pencil down that way, that's my F. And um, so for once, I don't have to draw gravity because it says ignore the weight of the pencil. And, um, but I have this contact point here, which means there uh, will be two types of contact forces at that uh, point of contact. There will be normal force that's perpendicular to the surface and there will be friction force. And here is where you kind of look at the situation, realize that without the friction force, it'll slide to the left. So you introduce a friction force uh, acting to the right to make it, so, make it so that it won't slide. All right, I guess that's all the forces. Um, um, so that's step number one. I've drawn all the forces. I think I drew all the forces. Step number two, I need to define uh, my coordinate axis. And here, my um, applied force being along the pencil actually uh, gives me a quite clear choice of uh, coordinate origin, which is the, which is the point of, oops, I meant to switch the pen, which is the point of contact between the pencil and the uh, tabletop because at the, if with this as the origin, the applied force has a zero lever arm. And with this origin, the normal force and the friction force also has zero lever arm, which really simplifies what you need to do because the static equilibrium condition is net force is equal to zero and net torque is equal to zero. And normally you wouldn't need to write out the net torque equation but with this as the origin, you get all the possible sources of torque are already zero. So, um, so you don't even have to write down this equation. That's um, 
Um, so, so you want to choose that as the origin. That's the choice of origin that actually uh, makes this into a just a net force is equal to zero problem instead of having to deal with the torque and all that. And that's where I was saying uh, I might be able to <laughs> kind of get away with uh, using a dot as a representation, but uh, I think you kind of need to draw this picture to see how it simplifies. So, okay, so that's a step number two. Step number three, oh, I guess I need to still break down my uh, force into components. So I think I'm going to, oh, I should have done this in step number two, which is that I'm picking this as my coordinate axis, X and Y, then, um, then I need to break down force into components X and Y. Here's the X component, and here's the Y component. And uh, I think I'm actually gonna keep them separate as X and Y components. I think that's gonna be easier for me to kind of see where, um, how things change as I change this apply the force. So let me write down, uh, so that's step number three, step number four, let me write down my Newton's second law equations. Net force along the x direction is going to be my friction force minus the x component of the applied force. That's equal to zero. Net force along the y direction, that's the normal force minus the applied force along the y direction is equal to zero. That's a, such a simple equation. I guess you can just solve for it and get um, your friction force is the x component of applied force. Your normal force is the um, y component of the applied force. And when you do that, I hope you realize that <laughs> you are not answering the question that they're asking, which is, so they are asking for the minimum angle at which um, the pencil can stand. So you're looking somehow for theta. Now, what you have here doesn't re relate to theta. So you need a way to relate to theta somehow. It's gonna be something like, okay, um, the ratio of Fy over Fx is equal to tangent theta. So I think, uh, I hope you get the sense that, um, so if you're thinking of decreasing theta from 90 degrees to zero, as theta decreases, that would uh, correspond to um, f of x uh, increasing. Uh, that's where the, there being minimum possible angle coming into place. So you can imagine kind of applying some amount of magnitude of force so that the normal force remains the same. If that's the case, the restrictions on the friction force, that the static friction force can only be the, the maximum value is the coefficient times the normal force puts an upper limit on how large the friction force can be. That means the X component of the applied force can only reach it up to a value before you uh, reach the limit of the friction force. So it'll just slide. So, so that guides you, you into setting up the expressions that'll uh, lead to this uh, theta mean value. So let me take a little bit of care in setting up this equation because it's gonna be an inequality. So uh, let me do that. So I'm, um, so let me start by saying this, the ratio of f of y over f of x. That's going to, be using this, uh, uh, this set of equations here, that ratio is gonna be the same as the ratio of the normal force over the friction force. Now, because of this limitation here, and remembering the rule about the inequality when the quantities are positive, that means this ratio 
has to be greater than or equal to the normal force over the greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. Let me think of this through. Yeah, yeah, greater than or equal to because the condition on the friction force was less than or equal to. So greater than or equal to uh, mu S N. So the normal force cancels. This is where the actual magnitude of the applied force doesn't matter. One over mu S is the uh, kind of uh, constraint that's put on this ratio. This ratio of the forces has to be greater than or equal to one over mu S. And from this equation here, that ratio of the forces is equal to tangent of theta. All of this leads to us saying theta has to be greater than or equal to arc tangent of one over mu s. So the theta that they're looking for is the theta that satisfies this condition here. If you are at, a, at an angle smaller than this, then this static equilibrium condition cannot be satisfied. There's, um, there's not enough friction force to maintain, to maintain the static equilibrium condition. So let's work out that angle and plug that in. So uh, one over mu s, uh, make sure I'm in degree mode so that I get answer in degree. Uh, one divided by 0 0.65. That, um, so it's gonna be angle bigger than 45 degrees, I think. Trigonometry, second, arc tangent, yeah. 56 point, uh, one decimal place, I guess that's 57.0. So 57.0 degrees. Um, oh, what question number was this? Question A. 57 degrees. Should be right. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, that's, uh, um, that's another sen uh, static equilibrium question where um, if you set it up right, you can avoid having to deal with the torque, but um, in order to be able to set it up right, you should be aware of a uh, role of torque so that uh, you can kind of choose the path that makes everything simplest possible.